So this is the box that Matrix Pachinko came in. That was the unboxing of the ball, the ball tray, and the key. This is the first raw cuts of the wood. That was the angled foot rest. I was trying to get the right angle on that. That was the te first test fitting of the Pachinko machine in the cabinet. And then I took it back out to the garage and made the holes for the screws. And then I put felt on the bottom and there's a gate latch uh, to attach it to the wall, make sure it doesn't tip over. Then I painted it. Uh, and then I cut a hole in the top for the balls, put a shelf on the bottom to hold the tray, and a chute out of the back using a funnel. So here's my Matrix Pachinko and the custom pack cabinet that I built for it. And spray painted it black. A uh, very simple construction made out of 2x8s purchased at Lowe's. Home Improvement Store. I built it to the dimensions uh, that would fit these uh, chairs that I made for the, the counter tile wall and made over there. So I just wanted it to match so that somebody sitting here, their feet would rest perfectly at a, a right comfortable angle, angle, at a correct angle down there. Um, so as you can see, it's angled good for your feet right there. It's not straight. It's not 90 degrees. Um, and here were, <laughs> this was how I designed it. So I had a bunch of to-dos and I'm making a to-do list and I was like, oh yeah, Pachinko cabinet. So buy some two bay to Lowe's. And so there are all the dimensions you will need for the base, the bottom of it. You need two pieces at 37 and 1 8 inch and then one piece at 20 and 1 half inch and then the that's the middle section that's angled there in the middle and then the top section uh, will need to be one of the pieces that's cut 23 and a half inches um, that top piece um, on the top section will need to have a hole cut in it like so so that you can feed your balls um, into the top there I'm still going to make a topper there, um, make it a lot wider so that I can pour a ton of balls up here and have them all just automatically feed down into that and have that removable easily so I can pop it out and then open the machine still. Um, so yeah, those are all, that's what you're going to need. Um, two pieces at 37 and 1 8 inch, two pieces at 31 and 7 8 cents and then two pieces at 23 and a half inch and then one piece at 20 and a half inch. Now if you follow those dimensions it's going to be very tight fit. Very very tight fit. And by, by tight fit I mean absolutely no room for error at all. It was so tight putting it together. Um, as you can tell there is absolutely no wiggle room. So if your cuts aren't perfect, if, they're, if you don't sand them down perfectly then you're going to need you to leave yourself some wiggle room. So I, if I were you doing it, I would just increase those dimensions by a little bit um, to give yourself some wiggle room. But yeah, if you cut them exact and your cuts are perfect and everything's good and all the seams fit together, you should be okay. On the back side, you can see how I mounted it to the wall so it doesn't tip over. As you can tell, um, that's just a little kind of gate fastener. Um, you can turn this to unlock it. You could even put a lock there so that um, the only way to remove it from the wall would be to open the machine like so. That's enough. Um, and as you can tell, then the only way to do it would be to turn this, but it is solid. I mean, it is not going anywhere. As you can tell, all the weight of the machine with full Balls in top and balls in front is supported perfectly on the hinges. And as you can see, I put a funnel back here. Also just bought that at Lowe's. Put a funnel down to, uh, for the back side of the machine so the balls run down here and then they come down to the collection bin right here. This bin holds about 2,000 balls, so uh, plenty for me. And then I have a little, little extra tray here for over spills or whatever. Um, but that's the cabinet. It's pretty simple. Um, this piece was not listed in the uh, original cuts, but it is just the exact same size as this one. So that was one of the 20 and a half inch. So you would need just one more 
20 and a half inch, that's what this one is. So you would end up needing two 20 and one half inch cuts. So uh, to finalize that, it would be two 37 one eight inch pieces of wood, uh, two pieces of two by eight, two 31 and seven eighths, two by eights, two 23 and one half inch, two by eights, and then one, or sorry, two 20 and one half inch, two by eights. And there's the cabinet. And once again, you could put a lock on there if you want to, um, but it's really, really secure as it is. And as you can tell on the back side with the uh, two by eights, the dimensions of a two by eight is not actually eight inches. They just call it a two by eight. Um, it's actually about seven and one fourth inches, which is perfect for the machine actually. I mean, as you can see, I have it right on the edge there. And then on the back side, you don't see it and then boop, oh there's the machine it's perfect literally perfect perfect alignment but if you're gonna mount this against a wall um, I would probably do this like I've done here to give yourself a little room because as you know these machines have a lot of fans to keep them cool and you don't want that pressed straight up against the wall you want to give yourself some air flow on the back side there so I would suggest leaving some room like I've done there but you're gonna have to modify this thing uh, I, this wasn't cut right there that that was not cut I actually grinded that and cut that because the original cut is just basically right here but that wouldn't work with this because when you turn it um, it would not go through there but yeah there's the cabinet and all the dimensions um, I constructed that lower part first very easy then put the machine on top very carefully had some help for that and then test fitted the top made sure everything was good and then just screwed it all together um, with huge four inch screws each one of these screws right here they're four inch screws right there on the corners not those obviously that go into the machine um, and then these screws right here are four inch um, as well one thing I did not show you very well on the inside here, the bracing in the corners, I used some 90 degree um, four screw braces right there. It just helps a little bit. Probably not necessary at all, but I over engineer everything just to make sure. So once again, you can totally trust that all the way the machine on those hinges on this cabinet is totally okay and it is locked in solid not going anywhere I mean nowhere but alright there's the cabinet there's the matrix pachinko it's fun 